Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to explore the concept of nodes, loops, and branches. Here we have a simple circuit drawn. We have a voltage source, we have a current source, we have three resistors. Where are the nodes? Well, we have one here at A, we have one here at B, and we have one here at C. Sometimes it's a little troubling when you look at this and say, this is a node, but if you redraw the circuit and make it look like this, you can then see simply that A is this node right here, B is this node right here, and C is this node right there. We'll get to the definition in just a moment. First, let's define a branch. A branch in the circuit represents a single element, such as a voltage source, or a resistor, or a current source, or an inductor, or a capacitor. It could be any, any number of things. A single element can be any of those items. And in this particular case, notice there's five of them. We have a voltage source, we have a current source, we have three resistors. So therefore, there are a total of five branches. A node is a connection between two or more of those branches. Here we can see that node A connects the voltage source to this resistor. Node B connects those two resistors and this current source to this resistor and node C connects these two resistors, this current source, to this voltage source. Therefore, a node is a connection between two or more branches. A loop is any closed path in a circuit. A loop starts from any node, like node A. You then follow any path until you get back to node A. That would be a loop. We can take another path this way, that would be a second loop, starting from A to here, that would be a third loop. So you can see that a loop is simply any path that starts at a node, goes to a continuous path, and ends up at the same node. An independent loop contains at least one branch that is not part of another independent loop. If you look at this loop right here, and then you look at this loop right here, Notice that this resistor is not a branch of this loop. So therefore, this would be an independent loop relative to this loop, as long as it contains at least one branch that is not contained in the other loop. At this point, we can define what we call the fundamental theory of network topology. Here we have an equation. On the left, we have the letter B that represents the number of branches. L represents the number of independent loops, not just the number of loops, but the number of independent loops, and N represents the number of nodes in the circuit. And the equation is always correct to say that the number of branches in any circuit is equal to the number of independent loops plus the number of nodes minus one. And you could try it here. The number of branches that we have is five. One, two, three, four, five. 5 is equal to L. L is the number of independent loops. We have one loop here, we have a second loop there, and we have a third loop. Notice that the second loop contains this branch that's not contained in the first loop, and the third loop contains this branch which is not contained in the second or the first loop. Therefore, there are three independent loops. This is equal to 3 plus how many nodes are there? A, B, and C, there are three nodes, minus one, and sure enough, five equals six minus one, or five equals five. That then becomes the fundamental theory of network topology. I forgot my tick marks on the other side. That gives you a basic definition of a node, a branch, a loop, an independent loop, and then also the fundamental theory of network topology. After we get these fundamentals under control, we can then start analyzing circuits, analyzing circuits for how much current, how much voltage, how much resistance is on them. But first, we need to understand the basic information to help us understand what makes network circuits and how network circuit components within them are defined.